Hello, my name is Dr. Kevin Corris, and I am the Agricultural and Natural Resources Extension Agent for Alachua County uh, for UFIFIS Extension. Um, today we're going to talk about scouting your peanut fields for a few of the common diseases that we see each year. Um, in subsequent videos, our pathologist, Dr. Nick Defoe, will talk about uh, management and what kind of fungicide operation you may need to control these diseases. Um, and this video is going to be uh, based mostly on the identifying features of these diseases. So the first disease I want to talk about is peanut rust. Now peanut rust can actually be pretty easily identified by its orange erumpent pustules that form on the leaf surface. So on peanuts what you'll first notice is almost like a flecking on the upper surface of orange to brownish spots. When you turn that leaf over to the back side, what you'll notice is that those leaf spots are actually erumpent, meaning that the, the spores from the fungus actually push themselves up out of the leaf surface and create almost a braille type feeling on the bottom leaf surface. If you have a peanut field that is heavily infested enough with rust, it'll actually turn your pants orange if you walk through it. So you'll notice these rust-colored or orange-colored erumpent pustules coming out of the bottom side of the leaf, and that's a good indication that you have peanut rust. Um, if you slide your finger across the leaf surface, you'll actually notice um, kind of an orangish-brownish film, uh, dusty film on your fingers, and those are from the rust spores. Now, rust um, actually comes in from other areas each year. Um, the fungus survives our winters um, on infected plant debris or on um, volunteer plants that come up in the road ditches or as a weed, um, peanut weed. The, the fungus will overwinter there and then in the spring it'll create its spores and those spores will be wind blown and rain splashed into your field. Um, so peanut rust infections typically start at the top of the plant and work themselves down. So you'll see the, the newest growth um, form the lesions first. And again, there'll be erumpent, orangish, rust-colored pustules that stick out through that leaf surface. The next disease or disease complex rather that I'd like to talk about is leaf spot. Leaf spot is very, very common here in Florida and we have two different fungi that cause leaf spot. Uh, one particular fungus causes an early leaf spot and the other fungus causes a late leaf spot. The symptoms are so identical that sometimes we can't identify them just based on looking at the leaf symptoms. We actually need to submit a sample to a diagnostic clinic where they can use microscopes to identify the different spores created by the two different fungi. So leaf spot, as the name implies, will show up on your plants as these dark brown to black, almost perfectly circular spots on the leaf. Both early leaf blight and late leaf blight will do that. Now, they do say that early leaf blight, if you hold it up to the sun, you'll see a yellow halo around that lesion where you don't see that with lay fleet spot. But this isn't a very great um, way to tell. Sometimes late leaf spot can end up getting that halo. So if, if you need to be sure on whether or not you have late leaf, late leaf spot or early leaf spot, I recommend submitting a sample to the University of Florida's Plant Diagnostic Clinic to differentiate which ones you have. So um, other than spore identification, the way that these two foliar diseases are um, differentiated is that early leaf spot shows up earlier in the season and lay fleet spot usually shows up a little bit later. So their typical symptoms are circular lesions on the leaf, but if you have heavy enough infestation, you can get leaves, uh, lesions on the petiole, the stem, and even the peg of the peanut as well. Leaf spots are what we call um, residue-borne diseases. So they actually survive our winters in infested plant residue. So if you plant peanut in the same location year after year and you don't do any kind of tillage to work in that and break down that plant material, um, you may have higher amounts of this fungus in your field. So understand that it is um, residue borne, which also means that it's going to work its way from the bottom of the plant to the top. So you'll first start seeing early and late leaf blight lesions um, on the bottom of the plant first and then working their way towards the top. It's good to scout early and often 
as soon as you see these lesions forming in heavy amounts, it's probably a good indication that you need to start your peanut fungicide program. The next disease I want to talk about is called white mold of peanut. And white mold can actually be seen um, from a field wide view as plants that um, have yellowing or plants that begin to collapse early like this plant I'm holding in my hand. Its leaves are actually wilted, turned brown, and, and the whole plant has kind of collapsed. And so you may see that in pockets throughout your field. Um, so what you want to do is if you see a plant that's dying and you're not sure why, you want to take that plant and look towards the base of the stem. And what you're going to notice if it's white mold, as the name implies, is kind of a white moldy substance along that stem. It looks like a kind of a white cottony uh, material. That's actually something that the fungus produces called mycelium. Now after um, a heavy infection and after some time passes with this particular disease, that fungus will create little black sclerotia. It's a hardened fungal material that the fungus uses as a survival structure and you will see that embedded along the stem. They're called sclerotia. The name of this pathogen is Sclerotium rolfsii. So it's named after the fact that it produces these little black hardened masses. So what you'll notice out in the field is plants that are what we call flagging, turning yellow or brown prematurely. Find those plants, work your way down to the stem, and if you see a white cottony substance growing off the surface of the stem of your plant, it's a good indication that you have white mold. White mold is treatable um, it, with a good fungicide plan. So again, a scout often and early. Make sure you know whether or not your fields have this, and if, if they do, it is treatable. It's good to keep a history of the diseases in your field so you know which kind of suite of fungicides you may need to employ for the following year. The final disease we're going to discuss today is what's called the pod rot complex. There are several soil-borne fungi that can cause pods to rot once they set in the ground. So fungi like Fusarium, Rhizoctonia, and Pythium, for example, can all infect your pods and cause them to rot and decay. Now this disease can be very difficult to spot out in an open green field as these pathogens don't necessarily cause any kind of dieback of the foliage or yellowing. Sometimes it's not until you actually dig your field that you notice the pod rot. And what you'll notice is that your pods are underdeveloped, um, oftentimes they're discolored, um, usually a brown to black. Um, some of them can be underdeveloped, no seed in them. Um, and then the peg leading up to them can also be full of lesions, uh, brown to black lesions, and the peg itself can be sunken or hardened. Um, it's just not a nice green color like you would expect. So after you dig your peanuts, um, if you notice a particular plant that doesn't have a very good pod set, grab a few, wash them off, and look at them. If they're brown and dark and shriveled up, it's a, it's a good uh, symptom that you may have some pod rot going on. Now for this particular disease, it is very important that you submit it to a plant diagnostic clinic so that they can tell you which fungus is responsible, as the management strategies may differ depending on which fungus it is. So when in doubt, contact your local extension agent or please consider submitting a sample to the plant pest diagnostic clinic at the University of Florida.